Hearts. That's our word. We're your host, Jim Jesus, and uh, t- Matt Pritchard from YouTube's To Sauce channel. Uh, the Wallbirds is covered by a Bipcot No Government License. It's, it allows use and reuse by anyone except state governments. You can learn more at bipcot.org. And we're connected to the magic of theme phone, which is why we sound better than podcasts using Skype or that godforsaken Google Hangouts. You can learn more at bit, uh, fiendphone.com, music by 3 chainlinkscom until our music composer gets around to finally making something for us good. Um, so how are you today, Matt? I am absolutely pumped <laughs> because the new Star Wars trailer debuted yesterday, as I'm sure everybody knows, because it's got like, I don't know, like 20 million views on YouTube or some ridiculous shit. Um I uh, the magic's back, man. I uh, I'm a child again, and I I'm not gonna lie. I got choked up when I saw the trailer, and I'm freaking out. <laughs> I really hope Jar Jar Binks is gonna be in this one. That was wicked awesome, and the other one. Oh god, <laughs> that that will not happen. I, that I, will I, not happen. Let's, let's hope not. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of interesting stuff about this. I mean, and I I saw the trailer. I just stumbled on it. I didn't. I wasn't even looking for it. I just stumbled on it. Um, just looking up something. And I was like, oh, wow, this is great. Like, um, they actually have some black characters. Like, you know, well, I guess they had black characters in the first one, Lando Carissian, but that was it, right? Lando, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I guess he, this one's going to play like an actual, a main character, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. In fact, I think there's been some, uh, some hate about it. <laughs> on there's, the internet, uh, yeah. there's been a little bit of controversy, a um, <laughs> little, little bit of nonsense going on about this. Yeah. Apparently, uh, you know, Star Wars is code for anti-white now, so <laughs> I don't know. I guess that's a thing. Yeah, so why don't you go ahead and talk about it? I mean, you're the bigger Star Wars fan than I. I mean, I love Star Wars. Don't get me wrong. I'm just I'm just not, you know. You're not a child like I am. Yeah, I'm not a child. Like, no, no. Right, okay. Uh, well, yeah, so this it. is... Uh, sure. I am I am super pumped for this movie. Um, the, the trailer, I think, looks fantastic. It hit... Uh, we still know virtually nothing about the story from it. It's just a bunch of destruction and lightsabers. Uh, but it is uh, it is going to be featuring this character, Finn, played by John Boyega, who was in uh, Attack the Block. Uh, he's a great actor, and I think he's going to do a fantastic job. But apparently uh, the white nationalists on Twitter and everything are angry that he's a stormtrooper uh that was that was what it was at first but now since the trailer came out uh they are promoting hashtag boycott star wars 7 uh because it promotes hashtag white genocide (laughs) which i find is interesting because nobody's seen the fucking movie yet anyway like it's i I'm, i'm gonna go out on a limb and just uh and maybe assume that the movie is not about white genocide and it's not, you know, promoting some sort of anti-white message. Just going to I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't think I'm wrong about this either, but nobody has seen the movie. How, how can they be even be saying nobody knows what the story is about? And yet somehow they're, they're saying this is, is promoting some sort of a political message. And, and it's 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 absolutely it's insane. This sort of reminds me of uh, I, I know you've seen Chasing Amy, where they where mm-hmm. the 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 black gay character you know pretends to be a black Latin nationalist comic book writer, and then as soon as <laughs> as soon as everybody leaves you know he's he's you know he's you know broken wrist and everything, but he was saying like you know Star Wars was the best you know uh, pro black film ever, and then they ruined it at the end by making black uh, Darth Vader you know a. Uh, a black, uh, a white guy at the end because they're saying that uh-huh. black people all want to be white deep down inside, <laughs> you know. And the right. whole movie is just a whole hate-filled <laughs> movie, and this is exactly the same thing. Only just flip the script. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all you're doing. Yeah, except th- except that there's no movie yet. There's no movie. <laughs> no one has seen it. Yeah, like I like sometimes I am fine with judging movies before I've seen them. Sometimes if like if something has a really terrible trailer or the subject matter is really, you know, uh, just something I'm not interested in from the get go. But beyond knowing that there are lasers and magic in this movie, nobody knows what the story is. Like you can't even draw some sort of insane comparison like that until the movie is out and you'll still be wrong then. Yeah. I think about all the times we've seen like a great trailer for a terrible movie. Terrible movie, yeah. yeah. Star Wars. I'm really the original, hoping. I, I'm uh, not the original. Excuse me. The uh, yeah, the first three episodes, which is the prequels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those were great examples of great trailers, and you go see it, you're like, why? 
yeah just just yeah. horrible horrible <laughs> movies but my thing is like i'm i'm very confident about this movie jj abrams is a great director and i mean his star trek films they, they were star wars movies i yeah. mean let's let's yeah. face it they were star wars movies those were not star trek movies so if he and and the bar is set so absolutely low for the level of quality that this movie has to deliver <laughs> that i don't think it's possible to fail as long as it is better than the prequels and I don't know how it could be <laughs> worse than the prequels, <laughs> then I'm I'm going to absolutely love it. Yeah. And I think it's going to make more money than probably anything in history. I mean, the like theaters are already selling out and uh, you know, it's, it's two months out for this thing. Oh, that's right. It is coming out really soon, isn't it? That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the Star Trek movies were fantastic. Like my parents were like, Oh, come on, let's go see Star Trek. I'm like, but it's Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want to sit around and talk, like listening to them talk in, for an hour about, about a cloud in space. Yeah. About a cloud in <laughs> space and the, the geopolitical ramifications, you know, of the intergalactic confederation or whatever, you know, and what they're going to deal with it. Like, come on, just, just yeah. blow it up already. But no, oh my goodness, that was the more it was intense. It was a very intense movie. And um, Yeah, there's urgency, there you know, there's action, there are characters that you know you identify with and you you can there's some emotions there and and I, I think that all of that is going to be present and all of that is what was lacking in the prequels was like I didn't care about anybody. There was I mean, there's no intensity to those movies whatsoever. Um there's no nothing at stake really. Um and they tr they they tried as hard as they could to ruin Darth Vader, uh, so I don't know. I, I think this this is going to be fantastic. Yeah, I saw the first one and I thought the pod racing scene was cool, but everything else was like. Mm. And then I and saw a lot of people hate a lot of people hate on that pod racing scene, and I don't know why. Yeah, it was like, the, like I enjoyed it. That, that's like one of the most interesting parts of the movie. <laughs> Arguably the only, uh, except for yes, maybe the sword I, fights. Yes, I would agree yeah. with that. <laughs> the, the, the sword fights were great, too. And I saw yeah. I saw half of the second one, and I actually got walked out of theater, and I was, yeah, it I'm was done. It's and, atrocious. And I remember the exact part. It was when he said to her, um, you know, like, you know, I like, like, I hate the beach. The sand is coarse and grainy, unlike your sin, yeah. soft and smooth. I was like, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Out of here. It, and, it, and it got worse. Yeah. Believe me, there was, there was more dialogue like that, and it got a lot oh, worse. And and I feel bad because that guy Christian uh, Hayden Christensen who who played Anakin uh, Skywalker, he gets this rap as being just a terrible actor uh, because of those movies, and he's not a terrible actor. No, he uh, wasn't terrible. He was in given that. yeah horrifying horrifying dialogue. Uh, George Lucas is notoriously not a director that works well with actors, uh, and I've seen him in other things, and he's he's good. He's decent. He's got, he's got some skills, and and it's it's just a. You know, it's really unfortunate. I mean, Natalie Portman, who I think is fantastic, as well as Ewan McGregor and uh, and and everybody else that was a big name actor in those movies was terrible. Everyone was terrible. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't just Hayden Christensen. We yeah. just everybody got more angry because he's Darth Vader. He's this beloved villain character that we've had in our minds for you know since the time we were children, and that is it was the opposite of that character. <laughs> And that wasn't his fault. Yeah, but it was a beautiful story because it was about a bunch of white people going and beating up the big black guy, right? But yeah, now, exactly. But and now this that's, is the that's, reverse is true, and well, we can't we can't have that. <laughs> yeah, it's I I'm it's it's bad. It's bad. You know, white genocide. Hashtag white genocide. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and I never saw the third one, and I, I I never even bothered to look up how the story ended. And I it's, I, was uh, like, I it's, don't care. I really didn't care. It's it's really bad. Like it's still horrifyingly bad, but it's a cut above the first two. Like for sure. It's really? A, it's it's a much better movie. Yeah, but I mean it's still that's not saying much. It's it's still one of the prequels. It still shares all those weaknesses. Uh, you know, there's still a bunch of stupid quippy jokes and uh just it's it doesn't make any sense still uh darth vader his, his you know his transformation into darth vader he goes from being basically just uh a whiny teenager to murdering children with his lightsaber uh, <laughs> uh like changes on a dime it's it's like a five minute transition and now he just is completely evil and and the character that this is the thing that bothers me the most about that character uh is that darth vader is like this cold and cunning and calculating enemy He's very, like, he's calm and he's intelligent. And the Anakin Skywalker who became Darth Vader in those movies was just this uh, overly emotional um, idiot. 
like he was just really dumb and that that was it, just, it was i don't want to talk you know what? i don't want to talk about the prequels anymore I can't, I mean, the new the new one is coming out all yeah. right the new one is coming out and i'm gonna feel good and it's gonna be magic and i can't wait yeah, and then there's going to be some Jar Jar characters. It's going to ruin it, right? Let's hope not. Oh, let's, God, let's hope not. I, I don't think they're going to do that. No, and, no. and even if I there is, it's lesson. going to be a puppet this time. It's they're not they're not doing a muppet. There are going to be a couple of <laughs> fully CG characters, but they're using like a bunch of like traditional puppets uh, for a lot of the characters now. Oh, so there is going to be Jim Henson doing. Or not? Well, maybe not Jim Henson, but the no. Jim Henson creature shop. Yeah, they they they, they dug up his corpse and yeah. uh, you know d- made some sacrifices, did a ritual, and uh, awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's uh, I I would ass- I would assume it's probably uh, uh, Brian Henson or the rest of the. Was this the a Henson pagan ritual? Company. By the way, this is a pagan. Um, take, uh, go, uh, go yeah, I'm pretty or? sure that uh, that okay. they probably contacted uh, Invictus Soul. <laughs> Whatever the hell his name is. Yeah, and he came out with this fascis and uh, made it happen, right? Okay. Yeah, so, exactly. Okay. Uh, so what's, what's this article that you sent me? The new Star Wars Blasted is anti-white. Um, is there anything else interesting in this thing? <laughs> Not particularly. Uh, I mean, the there's this whole thing of like, they're, they're talking about how like, you know, Star Wars didn't have black characters, which I it mean, did. to an extent, was true. It had it had Lando Calrissian, who is awesome, by the way, yeah, uh, and was an important character to intimately important to the story. Uh, and Samuel James Earl Jones, you know, did the voice of well, yeah, sort Samuel of. Jackson was in those movies, but those yeah. movies were terrible. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but even still, but, but it's yeah, it's like it's like it's it's been a thing in Hollywood for a long time that we haven't had. Um, many many black people in in the in leading roles and i think that's simply a product of the fact that you know the majority of people in the united states are white and Especially they the have 70s. more buying power yeah. uh, for a long time they've had more buying power than everyone else and now studios are starting to find that there's a huge underserved market of minority populations that want to see characters that they identify with on screen and this is why you've got things like Fast and the Furious has one of the most diverse casts, you know, ever. And it's an incredibly successful franchise. Uh, I don't think it's solely due to that, but uh, but it's it's definitely a factor. Like, there's there's just kind of a cultural shift that's happening, and it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't know. Like, people were saying that the, the, the new one that just came out was actually really good. And I was like, no, but, the, but I saw the first one. And that was all I needed to see. And they're like, no, 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 no. I understand your problem. The third, you know, the new one is pretty neat because it's got like a bunch of action stuff. And it's like, mm-hmm. I saw Mad Max. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was, yeah. There were also some problems with, speaking of Mad Max, there was also some problems with Mad Max. Or no, not real problems, but imaginary problems. Yeah, imaginary with, problems. Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, you know, like, you know, oh, like the, the. What I what I think Doug Walker called the meninists in his review, uh, you know, like the MRAs who were upset yeah. and mad that how dare they they make this this guy like taking orders from a woman like that would never happen in real life. But I know, I mean, it's, it, it, he started off taking him as hostages, right? Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's not like he was like per, like a you know a white knight the whole movie. He wasn't. Yeah, and and the this whole thing that. Uh, th- it was some conspiracy because Eve Ensler, who wrote the vagina monologues, is a huge feminist, uh, consulted on the movie. Um, and, of course, her consulting work was with the, uh, you know, the Victoria's Secret models who were the breeders. Uh, yeah, she helped them uh, with a little bit of background on what horrifying sexual abuse is like. And that's what they were running away from and fighting to escape. So that might have been maybe a little important to their character and their way that they acted on the screen and interacted with one another. Uh, but you know what? Uh, this this is also probably white genocide. I'm I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, the, the whiter people were after the the you know the the white. They people. they did kill Immortan Joe, and he was really fucking white. Yeah, like he was super white. I think he painted his. I think there were, a lot of them were painting their bodies super white on top of that, right? Yeah, <laughs> and spray painting. So their so really, we're silver. supposed to be we we're supposed to be you know cheering on Immortan Joe. And all of his, you know, psychopathic, uh, cancerous thugs who are trying to rape and kill everyone. Uh, they're the heroes. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> the, fa- the fact that, that they were dying in these big explosions, that's a tragedy. And, and that's, that's white genocide. Yeah. And I, there's, there's a part of me that kind of wants, 
a little bit of that old thing to you know go away where like those crazy minority groups we didn't give them the time of day it's like why gen- no yeah we don't care like no one's gonna listen to you but yeah. now these people are getting like airtime on cnn like you know like i know someone was like saying um i think coffin was pointing out that there was like this newscast and he showed me it and it was like um they were saying that the the, the removal of the the confederate flag in south carolina was literally white genocide and I'm like, <laughs> what? It is, it is, it is literally, you know, millions of, of white people being uh, murdered and, and put in mass graves. Yeah. It's, it's literally the white Holocaust. Yeah. Literally. Like we're all, we're all going, this is the ovens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what happened? <laughs> like, I don't we, know. Yeah. I, 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 well, I do know what happened. It's just that this is a, I mean, a lot of these people are reactionaries and and that is the literal description of what they are they are nothing but a reaction against the left and left and political correctness and i don't like political correctness but i really don't like the reactionaries and it's it's just it's a pushback against the left mm-hmm. um and and eventually like when these people because they're you're right they're getting bigger megaphones and they're getting more attention they will get more and more attention and they're they will reach kind of a a, a peak on that and then there's going to be an even bigger backlash against them yeah yeah so yeah, I'm, I'm not concerned they're mildly irritating is the problem <laughs> yeah it was it was a big push against anti-fascism and anti right wing during the bush administration and i guess it's, exactly it's, it's going to be the exact opposite when a democrat gets in and then I, don't, I really don't think a Democrat's going to win this election. Um, really? No, I don't. Um, you think it's going to be Trump? No, <laughs> I don't think it's going to be Trump either. I think he's going to say something that's really going to offend his base. You know, he's, he's a loose cannon. I don't he know. Is. What, who, who knows what's going to happen? But uh, I said, I, I don't know if you, you heard it because we're recording this like the day after we this uh, the Nick Hazleton uh, one, but I'm not going to release mm-hmm. it for a couple of days. Uh, so, but um but uh, we were talk. I was explaining to him that I think that Bernie Sanders would be like the like the probably the most preferable choice to actually get into the office than the the other main candidates or the front runners right now. Oh, really? And my, I think it, I I'm complete opposite of that yeah, is what I think. And my, <laughs> yeah, and I, he was yeah he said the same thing. Like, how could you think that? And um, my reasoning was, and I'm not going to go over too deep again because you know I already did. But you know the Republicans are not going to give him the time of day. Uh, and then mm-hmm. both, a lot of the Democrats aren't going to give him the time of day. The only people that are really going to like really start work trying to work with him too much are the firebrands or the people closer to the firebrands. But you know the Dixocrats and the mainstream they're going to they're going to you know like want to water everything he does down to get Republican support. And Republicans are not going to care about anything. Nope, you're socialist, get out of here. So I think like he was just he's just going to be a lame duck president for the most most of his run and that's it yeah i mean i i definitely think that if he were to be elected there would be uh he wouldn't be able to get a ton done but i feel like the things that he did get, get <laughs> was able to get done would be like obamacare on steroids uh yeah. in terms of how terrible they are because uh, i do know what you're saying like the republicans will absolutely 100 percent oppose him on literally even everything. if they agree with them they're gonna they're gonna find something to bitch about yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he call he calls himself a socialist. That is enough to get zero Republican support yep. whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like the, the the president is extremely limited in what they can do. But they can like the on the margins on which they can act, uh, and those margins shift all the time. Just varying political cir- circumstances. Who's in your cabinet? Like everything. It's very complicated. When they can act, they can do a lot of damage. Yeah. So I I don't know. I just I think though that having an open socialist in the presidency would set a dangerous precedent for the kind of culture of the left and, no. and their politics. Uh I just I, I I can't stand the man. Yeah. I I oh, think yeah. I don't think get me wrong. I'm not I'm not saying that I like him at all. I don't. <laughs> I see him basically as the inverted Trump. I see him. Yes, <laughs> I mean they even talk uh, but, the same. They even got the, that Brooklyn draw. So yeah, oh, I can't see it. I see him kind of. It's like I would much rather have 
um, someone like Hillary in office just because like we know exactly how she's going to act. She's going to be com- this just completely predictable. We know what the cl- the evil that is the Clintons. We know what they're like. They're bland and it'll be mostly status quo. Like they're not going to try and change a whole lot. Sanders, on the other hand, will try to change things pretty radically. And I would much rather have, like, you know, a bland and predictably corrupt police force that I could plan my life around (laughs) rather than just one insane cop running around trying to just, you know, enforce every single law uh, with, like, religious fervor. (laughs) You know, that just could randomly, uh, you know, do something horrible, uh, make your life horrible. You can't plan for it. But Hillary, I think, would be a much more stable choice. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. And you also got to consider regime uncertainty. If, yeah. if Hillary's in, Wall Street is going to be more a lot more comfortable than if Sanders is in, even if they have the exact same policies. Yeah, that's you know true. they would. If Sanders gets in, they're going to be they're going to not invest in a damn thing because they're going to be afraid of losing their property. <laughs> but I, I don't think that Hillary Clinton will be better on the regime uncertainty thing as well, because if you look at how Obama has been having this regime uncertainty too, because he's constantly threatening the producer class, he's constantly like like threatening to raise uh, taxes on businesses and corporations, mm-hmm. like he keeps threatening to raise. Uh, Taxes oh, yeah. on I'm capital gains she's tax, be... and no one wants to invest. Like we, there's like three buildings here that they were basically put on hold. One of them they ended up just demolishing it, and then started up a new. Poly, uh, they sold it off, and then now I think MGM is building like some Asian resort. But there mm-hmm. was there was like three buildings that no one wanted to touch until the next cycle went around, and they thought that maybe Obama would get you know out of office and because it was that regime uncertainty there was a fountain blue the yeah. echelon and i can't remember what the third one was so now they're going to demolish the fountain blue um they don't think they already got rid of the echelon that's that's done and now they're building some asian thing but i don't know but you know we have this big giant blue thing that's just sitting there collecting dust for the last you know how many years has that thing's been up like at least at least six years just sitting there doing nothing <laughs> and now they're saying yeah we're going to demolish it <laughs> like oh great it's like the tallest building in vegas they're going to demolish it for for now I'm, I'm, gl- I'm glad they used thank- all those resources on yeah. it and <laughs> L- literally thanks obama <laughs> yeah but they, they were citing obama for right the reason why you know yeah. but I don't think they would have been happier under Mitt Romney, but at least Mitt Romney wouldn't have been like, "Oh, we're going to raise taxes on all of you. You know, screw you all. Yeah. You're evil." He's, he doesn't. He doesn't do that. You know, he just yeah. does it anyway. Just doesn't say that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I just, I just want to clarify. I don't think that Hillary will will be great for you know the expectations of stable property rights. Yeah. No, but I do think that she would be a far cry better than Sanders. Yeah, we're just. I guess we're just comparing. I guess. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, you have of his platform. What what other th- what other crazy things does he believe in? Oh god! Besides those damn emails. <laughs> All right, attend events. Oh man, I am me- is- issues. Here we go. All right, all right. I was not prepared. <laughs> We're always prepared. Uh, income and wealth inequality. Today we live in the richest country in the history of the world. But that reality means little because much of that wealth is controlled by a tiny handful of individuals. The issue of wealth and income inequality is the greatest moral issue of our time. It is the greatest economic issue of our time. And it is the greatest political issue of our time. <laughs> but wasn't it got far worse? Yeah, wasn't it far worse under where uh, he vacationed at for his honeymoon in the USSR? Where like, even a far smaller minority held more of the wealth than yeah. everybody else? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. And, and and this is the thing that like drives me insane is that, you know, it, income inequality is a psychological problem, not an actual problem. Uh, you should really only be concerned whether or not you have enough on your plate, not, you know, if someone has more than you. Uh, I think there's I think Louis that I think I'm stealing that from Louis CK. Uh, but it's <laughs> There's this this number called the Gini coefficient that measures uh, what, like wealth inequality, and uh, places like where we are in the United States, uh, I can't remember if it's a higher or a lower rating, um, but we have like much much higher uh, gap between the rich and the poor here than do places like you know India. The the societies where the gap between the rich and the poor is small or non-existent are hell holes. Yeah. They're absolute hell holes these relative comparisons of wealth between people are just absolutely idiotic 
As, and as, especially since we have, you know, supercomputers in our pockets that can talk to anyone in the world at any time. Like we have all all of these things that have so increased our productivity and our happiness and our wealth that are not really accounted for in the statistics that um, it's 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 rather problematic, really. Yeah. And I'm triggered and need feminism. <laughs> yeah, I remember when porn costed so much and you had to buy it on VHS and like they come in these huge boxes for fifty dollars and like you every when you when you left everybody know what you just bought. But now it's yeah. like you can just go home and go online for free and it's just you have more than you'd ever want to look at. I mean exactly more than you'd ever want to look at. Ever want to look at, yeah. Let alone more what than you, you could possibly ever consume. See. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, more than you th- that you actually wouldn't want to consume as well. I mean yeah. every, they have everything that you could possibly never want on, yeah. <laughs> on top of everything that you possibly ever could want and you know and it's free you know every once in a while they'll be like hey come on give us a couple bucks and you know you can have you know higher resolution or whatever but eh. yeah but yeah but now is the problem because you know like the wealthier are wealthier even though we're wealthier too but we're you know they're just they're just talking about relative I don't really care if someone wants yeah, to be an ultra trillion billionaire. As long as you know, I'm I'm pulling in, you know, food and a nice place to live and doing a stupid podcast. I'm happy. You know, I'm very. I know happy. it's 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 incredible to me, and it's also like all of these statistics that they try and use that the left uh, tries to use to talk about how the middle class is disappearing uh, are so absolutely abysmally flawed. Uh, the middle class has not been disappearing, and the the measure by which they have been disappearing is because that greater and greater numbers of people are moving into higher income brackets mm-hmm. than were considered middle class previously yeah, so there the are technically class is improved yeah and so you're just basically it, looking at that small little narrow of area saying okay between was it 32,000 and you know 400 or you know 50,000 you know that's middle class but you know more yeah. people are making above that now then they're saying look it's shrinking well i don't even care yeah, if that's exactly. shrinking the middle that's cl- good that's a good thing yeah. yeah exactly and and all of the comparisons where they're talking about like families were better off in the 70s and the 80s oh and yeah the, the 90s. household income statistics the- oh my god and it and it drives me crazy because i'm like i look i, I barely remember the 80s I remember the 90s and things are much better now every product that i have in my home every product from you know uh toilet paper uh to you know my refrigerator the things in my refrigerator my tv my computer my internet connection are so vastly better than the quality of those items 20 years ago mm-hmm. That looking back 40 years it's it's crazy like people like cars used to just like have no efficiency to them whatsoever most didn't even have air conditioners inside them and now we have full climate control they emit way less uh waste they're way more efficient they cost less like it it's crazy to me that people actually believe they have like this nostalgia for being a a caveman Mm -hmm. and and and, go ahead no i'm just saying um I remember there was like a bunch of speeches that Jack Fresco does because you know he loves to ramble. Uh, he was ba- uh, Jeff Jack Fresco. He's the the, the Venus Project dude. You know the little yeah. old swamp hermit guy. Um, anyways, uh, he was saying that like you know oh if you go back in the fifties you know everything was so much better. You know your vacuums were made out of like you know cast cast iron and you know they lasted forever and everything that you needed to fix was just like a you know a rubber band or something like that but Mm -hmm. you know you go back and you look at the price tags on those things like they cost like in dollar amounts the exact same as they do now considering the fact that like you know a a bottle of coke was like a nickel back then or a penny (laughs) and and they're like 250 dollars for a vacuum that's like a whole month's pay for a vacuum I just bought a vacuum like last year for less than 30 bucks and yeah. it's amazing. And even, even the Walmart lady was like, Oh my goodness, I can't believe you got it that cheap, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's bananas. People, people really drive me insane. It's, they have these stupid biases about, you know, everything is always falling apart. And by literally every metric, things are getting better pretty much around everywhere around the globe. Um, and and I'm glad that Americans are blissfully unaware of what real poverty is. And yes, we do have real poverty in mm-hmm. uh, here, but our real poverty compared to real poverty 
anywhere else in the world is night and day. Yeah. Absolute night and day. Unless maybe you're homeless. <laughs> and even the people but again, who are I would rather be off. homeless. I would rather be homeless in, in New York oh, yeah. City or Las Vegas than Bangladesh. Mm-hmm. Like, I would too. That e- even even there, <laughs> it's much yeah. better. It's if you just couldn't go on the strip. If you know, that was that's basically the rule. If you're vagrant, you're not. They actually mm-hmm. don't allow vagrants on. They'll kick them out. I think it's actually oh, wow. a private street is why they can do that. Yeah, that's but, awesome. Um, yeah, <laughs> like, go to, and then they send them up downtown. You know, they have like a little area downtown where they all hang out. Um, yeah. But you know, th- this town is weird because it attracts like the worst of everybody. Because everybody mm-hmm. you know who are, is, is crazy or dumb thinks they can come over here and make a billion dollars <clears throat> off you know off off the casinos, and you can't. You know, yeah. the only rule of gambling that works is Wall Street. But anyway, mm-hmm. so. I think we've we've destroyed this. <laughs> this yeah, income thing. yeah. I think I think what we else? can move on here. Uh, what about uh, let's see? What about college tuition free? I mean, I can't I can't understand why the interest rates on college education is higher than a house or a car. Uh, am I stupid? What 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 am I missing here? I I, I don't really know. I mean, it's you definitely have collateral on a on a college degree. You know, if if they're not paying their loans, you can just revoke the education from their brain. <laughs> you know, you can, the bank can repossess that. So there's no more risk there than there is loaning on a car or loaning on a house. Uh, you know, the default rates for student loans and, and cars and houses, all exactly the same. Yeah. All exactly the same. You know, students don't default on their loans in inordinately higher numbers than do people defaulting on house loans or, or car loans. So I, I don't get it either. This is something me and Bernie, we're... We're right together on this, you know. <laughs> I'm just Those waiting for the day where you just, know they can jack into your brain, like the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just put, download it on <laughs> there. Like, oh, information. Oh, you, you didn't pay your bill, so we're gonna take it out. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uninstall. I mean, this is this is just like you don't have to know anything about economics or anything to just make an evaluation of what's more dangerous to loan for loaning my money. Am I am I gonna have a higher risk of you know not getting my my money back on someone who's majoring in underwater basket weaving or on someone who makes, you know, 65 K a year to two people working in the family and they want to buy a house and they have good credit. Mm -hmm. Like that's just, that's so absolutely stupid. Yeah. And a lot of these people just got out of high school. You have absolutely no idea if they're going to pay back their loans. You don't know. No, you have no idea. Yeah. Uh, just just a random sampling of a random high schooler you know <laughs> yeah and and, <laughs> yeah. The, and the thing is it's like banks they can't discriminate uh based on your choice of major or anything uh because things like stem majors tend to you know pay back their their loans much more so than humanities majors and they they can't they can't charge a different interest rate based on what you're actually studying and based on the relevant statistics on who, uh, on the risk factors of those things like it's it's completely messed up and i i don't know like college i think is a it's it helps you in the job market for sure uh because you can get your foot in the door (laughs) you can get an interview because you have that little box checked uh on their hr form uh but in terms of spending time in college uh most people i don't think should do it it's 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 a waste of money and a waste of time yeah and a lot a lot of places um they'll even offer free um uh, like at least sort of like free training like i'm looking into becoming a phlebotomist or at least i was and um mm-hmm. so most of the places would say like don't go and get your phlebotomist license instead just get hired and then we'll, you know they'll train you and you yeah. know they're based they, ha- they they send you to school they pay you to go to school you know you get paid a full paycheck while you're going to school for free and then when you get out you know you're basically under a contract and you have to work with them for a year but you know yeah. It's 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 they they can't really enforce it because that's kind of like involuntary servitude. <laughs> right. So, I mean right. like you could you could basically leave but they're going to try to, you know, sue you for money. You know, try yeah. to pay back. But anyways, yeah. And they sort of they they have like lots of stuff like that, especially in the medicine industry. And and uh, a lot of places um they were kept telling me like, you know, if you get your nurses, you know, we'll pay for your nursing, but it's like I don't want to be a nurse. No way. I see <laughs> that's I'm like no, yeah. no, no, no. I see how you guys you know all the crap they dump on you i don't want to be a part of that have fun yeah yeah and i mean there's, even, there's even things still, like yeah that's just one example that's just in my industry i don't know about anything else about any anyone else's industry but it seems like that may play out as well too 
Well, it's it's like uh, right now I'm studying computer science. I'm I'm uh, trying to become a programmer, and having a degree in in computer science, if you actually use it and learn things while you're in school, it puts you ahead in the job market because you can more quickly demonstrate that you have skills. But having a degree for being a programmer uh, means essentially nothing. It's it's based completely on your actual ability to successfully do it. Mm-hmm. There's not. It's not just like remembering knowledge. Uh, there's there. It's it's a skill, and they are they will hire you if you have skill to do it. Uh, it's you don't need to go to college. That's all I'm saying. It's. I mean, you do for some things, <laughs> and if you can get out without debt, I would say go. But if you're going to go into any sort of serious debt to do it, do not absolutely do not do it. It's not worth it, man. And what is this? Uh, okay, so stop the federal government from making a profit on student loans. Um, they do. How does the government can yeah, make? What? A, I don't. Th- yeah, this says this is number two on his list. Stop the federal government from making a profit on student loans. Over the next decade, it has been estimated that the federal government will make a profit of over a hundred and ten billion dollars on student loan programs. This is morally wrong, and it's bad economics. And I really him, him saying something is bad economics is just. <laughs> I know, I know. Smirk. Um, as President Senator Sanders will, will prevent the federal government from profiteering off the backs of the college students and then to use this money instead for significantly lower student loans interest rates. Okay. <laughs> this is, I mean, like, I, I, the, I can't, I want to know what the actual number is that they're, they're, they're loaning out. There's no sources. Versus, there's no sources. Oh, I, I know that. Okay. I know that. Okay. I'm just saying, like, in, <laughs> not from this website. Is okay. not, that's not oh, what okay. I'm saying. But I, I would be interested to see, like, how much money is being loaned out by the federal government uh, versus what they're making back in interest. Because I'm almost positive it's going to be more yeah. uh, being loaned out than they're making. They're not... Uh, they're not making a profit. And I'm doing air quotes, which everyone can see because you know, <laughs> this is a podcast. Um but uh, I mean, this this whole thing is crazy, and and this idea that everyone needs to go to college, it's it's perpetuating the problem. Mm-hmm. The reason that a college degree doesn't guarantee you a job anymore is because everybody has a degree. Yeah, and, and if we expand that, you're going to expand the problem. Yeah, and back in the day, like dropping out of high school was a normal thing. Like that's what a lot of people did, and a lot of people were, yeah. were successful with it. A lot of people weren't. But if you had a high school education, it was like interesting because it was like, oh, you actually stuck around, all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know, you, you know, I think what was it? Uh, there was like a lot of like oil tycoons and stuff like that who were made billions of dollars were, you know, high, high school dropouts. And if you look at a yeah. lot of these old CEOs, they, you know, from like a couple decades ago, a lot of them were high school dropouts. Now that's not the case. Like now they all have mm-hmm. something. But yeah even still it's hard to get a job even with the you know bachelors and anything anymore yeah i know it's 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 tough it's still a horrible job market out there and i mean the the degree like i said it's useful it does it checks that box on hr and lets them know that you're reliable enough to have finished four years of college uh and not dropped out and not failed like that is a big signal to them but at the same time like it's a colossal waste of resources uh and and there's an opportunity cost to it you can go out learn a skill and make money during the time that your friends are in college going into debt. You know, there's, there's a trade off there. Um, okay. So f- let's f- fully paid, uh, fully paid by imposing a tax on wall street speculators. What, what I, I don't even, I don't even know that what the, what that means. Like how can you identify when someone is speculating versus making like what they would consider a legitimate trade? Uh, like, but and and what you know, this is this how is this also any drives me than, crazy. Yeah. How is this any different from ca- like capital gains tax? Your 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 you, that's that's a tax on money that you earned in the in the market or investments, right? Mm-hmm. So what's the difference yeah. between that? Like, he, they may actually be talking about raising that. I'm not sure. Oh but, God, I hope you know, not. That's terrible. That's like one of the worst things you could possibly do. <laughs> like I know. Bill I'm pretty sure that, that we too. have like we have like one of the highest capital gains taxes in the world in the United States. If I'm thinking of the correct tax, um, I think, yeah, but I mean, this, this is cra- the thing that bothers me about all this shit where they're like, let's talk it, let's tax the rich is they just assume that the rich are going to continue to make 
the same choices and behave exactly the same when someone's taking more of their money. No. And that has so that just bears out and <laughs> never happens. <laughs> they change their behavior. They close their shops. They, they're going to, they're going to keep their money. They're not just going to let you take it until they're losing or their, their growth rates, you know, drop to, to virtually nothing. It's, it, it's idiotic. Yeah. Like, look at what happened with uh, Burger King. They just left. They pa- like everybody kept saying like, you know, if you don't like America, you could leave. If you don't like the tax or too high, you can mm-hmm. leave. Then they left. Oh, fucking traitor <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> like can you uh, believe they took they took away they took away our resources and and and, and took them somewhere else it's like, yeah yeah we know idiot <laughs> and so the next one on this list is uh getting rid of uh money in politics how many times if they keep trying this and they keep finding ways around it <laughs> and, and this is the other thing like this whole citizens united thing like it's it's as if corporations had never had a way to give money to politicians be- yeah. before citizens united you know that never happened yeah it's just since that decision it was catastrophic it's completely you know america we're all in rags now because of it uh the corporations control everything um when in reality nothing is different yeah i mean i heard about corporate personhood back when i was like a green you know back Mm -hmm. in like you know the early 2000s this is before citizens united and now they're like pointing at that like oh yeah now it's like you know corporations are a person it's like no that's always been the thing right yeah. and even still you're not even understanding what that means i know <laughs> you like oh. you have no idea what that even means <laughs> oh so you think money is speech yeah jim jesus thinks money is speech yes it is speech <laughs> i know, that, you know that, and that drives people so crazy when you say that you yeah. think money is speech yes yes and like, <laughs> yeah it's the difference between you you yelling on top of a soapbox and you yelling with a bullhorn that costs thirty five yeah. bucks. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Money is speech. <laughs> Money is speech. I rest my case. <laughs> like that's why you went and bought that thirty five dollar megaphone. You were investing to he- have your voice heard. I rest mm-hmm. my case. And again, that's just an absurd thing. Um, uh, creating decent paying jobs. Of course, we already know what he's going to talk about in this one, right? Raise the minimum oh, wage. Yeah. It's expense. Oh no, no, Security. because the next one under that is the living wage. Oh, oh, my, oh, my goodness! Yeah, I, I think even, this is gonna going to be about like, make work. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. It's even worse. A uh, recent study found that over fifty percent of African Americans and more than one third of white and Hispanic youth are still looking for full time work. Uh, this is cl- clearly a white genocide. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this is re- this is very related to Star Wars here. Pay attention, um, guys. Um, he, they, he wants. To, oh, I see. He wants to start building re- uh, stuff, building uh, infrastructure, and of course, that's going to you know, shovel ready jobs. It's going to increase everything, yeah. right? It's going to fix everything. Yeah. No, but I'm just why don't we just hire everybody to dig ditches with spoons, right? I think we've learned that yeah. lesson. Well, why why even use spoons though? I mean, the yeah. spoons are going to cost some money, so we could just, you know, and, and we could have them do more more work if they don't have the spoons. The project will take longer so we can keep paying them, and uh, we'll all be rich. Yeah. He introduced uh, the Employ Young Americans Now Act with Je- Representative John Conyers. Conyers? Conyers, whatever. Um, it would uh, provide $5.5 billion in the immediate funding to employ 1 million young Americans between the ages of 16 and 24, and would provide job trainings to hundreds of thousands of others. How? <laughs> They're just going to like I've, start government corporations and open up business, uh, uh, open up employment opportunities to them? I guess. And, and how does this work? Here's these these make work problems drive me so crazy too because they're always like you know well when we were building the interstate highways uh we you know people could pay their bills and put their kids through college and all you know all this nonsense but it's also like you know when we built the interstate highways you increased astronomically demand for cars and now we have global warming because of carbon emissions yeah so maybe you shouldn't engage in these make work projects when you don't know when the what the actual you know side effects of them are going to be yeah and i don't even want to talk about minimum wage i mean that 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 whole topic's been done to death done to death done Done to to death death. and people still just don't believe it because well you know it's magic I'll just say that I, I want to propose a dying wage for yeah. these people. <laughs> I think I saw you comment on the Punk Patriot, and I think that was, and it got you. Yeah, because <laughs> someone like who was like a um, 
on your Google Plus or whatever uh, contacts, and I wasn't, mm-hmm. and said that, that you left that comment there, and I was like, I don't see it. And I was like, okay, maybe if I add him, yep. Yeah, that was back when, you know, if you had someone on your Google Plus, you can see if their their comments, whether or not they yeah. were blocked from the channel. So good job on that one. I thought he yep. was coming around. I thought the Punk Patriot was finally coming around with every new video. No, oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Every single thing he does, I'm just like, you are just worthless. You are just worthless. Yeah, that, but that was me in, like, 2004. That was me. Well, no, not 2004. I was becoming more of a mainstream Democrat back then. But mm-hmm. the early 2000s, that was totally me. I was a Green Party. Uh, I wanted to run for for mayor just as a joke and like all that stuff. You know, Jill would be yeah. after all the way. And now I'm just like, well, you know, you live and learn. You grow up and do things that some people just don't grow up. And Bernie Sanders is, what, 80 now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Minimum. Yeah. Uh, so climate change and environment. Yeah. You know, uh, they're actually, I've, I've just stumbled across this new show called, um, actually, it's, it's not a new show. They had like clips of it of um, College Humor. And I hate College Humor, but that those those one particular mm-hmm. series was really good called Adam Ruins Everything. Yeah, yeah. And it, like I, sh- I showed this to like my lady friend. She was like, that they just made a show of you. That's just you. Like that's <laughs> like that's what everything I hate about you. <laughs> like just like everything that we think is great, you want to come and ruin. Yeah, with, with your facts and statistics, and like, <laughs> well, whatever. Um, but they're they're going to be doing one about um, how uh, you know climate change is real, but there's nothing you can do about it. So why bother? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh like, God, oh, please yeah. do that. Yeah, so it's it's going to be great. Um, Please do that. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not a climate change and like climate change denier, and I hate when people use that term because it implies like you're you know, anti semite. But um, yeah, exactly. I know they're roping you into you know white genocide. Yeah, it's um, clearly white genocide. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but no, uh, but I agree. I mean, like I I'm I think that enough there's enough experts out there who say that climate change is caused by humans. I'm like okay, whatever. Yeah, and the Build people that are saying around that. the cities, and yeah. we'll be fine. And the people that are saying that are not like the Al Gore types, and they actually have written stuff about how Al Gore is wrong about everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, it, it's not like terrible, it, but it, it's going to happen. And no matter, even no, even if we get like America to adopt like all of these green policies and like Solyndra, it will have out, zero effect. You got China. Good luck. Good luck yeah, getting them to stop with their coal plants. Good luck. Yeah, it's seriously good <laughs> luck trying to convince people who have been poorer than you can possibly imagine for generations. Uh, you know, because maybe the sea level might rise a little bit and the polar bears might die out and all of this awful stuff might happen. Yeah, good luck telling them that they shouldn't eat, <laughs> that they need to cut their carbon emissions and not be able to have industrialized agriculture because of that and all this stuff. Good luck with that. It's yeah. not happening. Racial justice. <sighs> I don't even. I don't even yeah. want to read. The, I hate even talking about this anymore because you, you're going to get everybody hating you, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can't appease anybody. You're going to get Black Lives Matter and the race realists after you at the same time, no matter what you yep. say. So, oh, I'm gonna, I know. I'm not even going to bother with it. Uh, <laughs> and that, and that, actually should, that that should be a barometer of when you're saying the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if everybody hates you, I'm like, oh, maybe. yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, fair and humane immigration policy. Um, and I know he's actually said that having an open border is a Koch brothers idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. And everybody yeah, yeah, was yeah. like freaking out like, oh, did he really say that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. I have no idea how that works. <laughs> but, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> I just saw the headline. I was like, really? Okay. I'm not even going to bother with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. And I can't stand when people do that, or they or they do the. Or it's a George Soros idea. Like it's the same thing. It's the same yeah, argument. Like oh, yeah, some wealthy build, build person gave you money. That doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means that you yeah, took money. Does, <laughs> yeah, I know, and it doesn't mean that you're just like obeying them as some sort of like slave. Yeah. So I don't even want to go through the rest of this fighting for women. Yeah, I don't. Rights. I don't either. I mean, this is just this is just <laughs> drivel. Yeah. And I, but I guess this is more. This is better than Jim Webb, right? The Jim Webb just dropped out yeah. <laughs> of of running for oh, president, man. and he was like the one person that was like, "Okay, I could I could stand having this guy in office. I could yeah, I, could, I know, I could like stomach I, this guy." I saw the thing that he said on gun control, uh, you know, where he was like, "You know, the people on this stage have, you know, 
bodyguards 24 7 <laughs> most americans can't afford that so maybe being able to defend themselves is okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was like okay you're a human <laughs> yeah and the other ones were like oh i got a d minus from the nra oh yeah well i got an f <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> like that makes I got me a better super than you. f yeah yeah i got an f minus <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not exactly doesn't mean a good thing i mean like the nra is terrible don't get me wrong but just because they hate you <laughs> that doesn't mean necessarily that you're good yeah enemy and my enemy right yeah uh, but yeah i guess he dropped out which is and i guess he's talking about running it as independent which would be interesting if he mm-hmm. actually runs as an independent against a democrat and a, just one republican yeah, that would be pretty incredible. Um, then we can just pretty much guarantee a Republican would be in office. And, uh, yeah. Well, you you can't forget that uh, Austin Peterson is running on the oh, Libertarian yeah. ticket. <laughs> Austin Peterson. He's yeah. my favorite. Yeah. You, you know his, his radical tax plan? No, no. Cut no. 1% from every single tax. 1%. When I think libertarianism, I think a 1% tax cut. He's going far. He's going places. Yeah, yeah, yeah he is. He's very principled. Yep. <laughs> and, and he's going to take that savings and then uh, bomb Iran. Bomb Iran, yeah. How does that work? <laughs> it's going to pay for the jet fuel to fuel the nuclear weapon to hit Iran. <laughs> jet fuel can't melt so. Iran. <laughs> Steal Iran. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Was there anything else? We, oh, we, we had a mailbag question. Uh, and I think oh, this is okay. probably actually more up your alley because I forgot to do it okay. with Nick. And then I was like, yeah, it's probably better because you're, you're the one sure. that probably reads more libertarian stuff than everybody else. Uh, and the other co host. So he says, uh, hey, Jim, I'm watching your Lober channel. I got to say that I'm very impressed so far. I don't think he realizes it's an actual podcast. But uh, yeah, anyways, mm-hmm. um, uh, t- to give you some background of what I was before, he was just basically saying that he's a he was a social justice warrior, left wing socialist, and he kind of got out of it. And now he's looking for some good book recommendations uh, to get him okay. out of that because he, he he sees himself as an individualist, but he doesn't uh, he doesn't really he hasn't read too much into it. Okay, um, so you probably let's know see. A few I mean, more books than I do, but I know a couple that are really good for 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 that sort of mindset. Go ahead. Yeah, so for getting out of the social justice warrior type of thing or getting into libertarianism? I guess out of both. Like, what would be the best? I think, I, mm. honestly, like, there's a book called um, Mary Ruart, and I have some problems with her, with mm. one of her books. Uh, but this one was really good. It's called uh, Healing Our World. And it, she, she, I think she actually came from the left. But it's a great introductory text for people who came from the left because it kind of explains like, yeah, like, you know, here's what's going to happen to the poor people and here's what's going to happen. Right, right. with Yeah. And there, she's very sympathetic to that that viewpoint, which is a really great book. But there was another book she wrote that was just terrible where she defended child porn. But this one was good. <laughs> this one, this one was good. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the title. There's uh Oh God, it's it's not actually di- directly related to libertarianism, but it's about. And I haven't read this book, but I've heard many, many great things uh, about why we have such like a, a high criminal population and how a lot of that came out of uh, actions taken by the left over the last uh, f- like fifty or sixty years, simply because they increasingly were calling for criminalization of behavior that they didn't like. And now that everything has been criminalized, everyone is a criminal, yeah. and uh, it's led to this like huge, massive uh, influx of more people in the prison system. So um, that might be something that's good to read. I can't remember the title of that that's for life helpful. of me, so I know I'm being really <laughs> helpful. I'm, I'm super helpful. But I mean, basically, the, the books for getting into libertarianism that I would definitely recommend... Um, absolutely, For a New Liberty, Machinery of Freedom, and... Uh, the most important one recently, um, the problem of political authority yeah. by Michael Humer. I think I shot just, come all over that one too. That one was great. Yeah, yeah. it is <laughs> so so good and just so well reasoned. Um, and all honestly, I would recommend reading the Fountainhead as well, just so you can at least understand the psyche of libertarian and uh, libertarians and uh, and kind of what the whole uh, radical individual thing individualism thing yeah. is about. Or, or may, maybe Atlas Shrugged, but. If Atlas Shrug is too much for you, and it can be, if like if you're reading it and it's like this is like I really don't need to 
th- three page long soliloquy about why this lady raised her eyebrow. Um, mm-hmm. If that, if you know, if that's not your, it's not, not your thing. Just, just read the Galt speech. That, that alone was, yeah, that, yeah, that just was great. <laughs> yeah, find the, find the sixty page speech and read that because yeah. it's phenomenal. And there's also like a YouTube version of it as well. I'll put, po- I'll post a link to the YouTube thing. Yeah, it's like three and a half hours. <laughs> oh, but it's great though. It's fantastic. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down so I don't forget. Yeah, and one notes. more thing about that speech, though, too, is that it's it bothers like so many attacks against Rand by especially the left are you know these just caricatures of her opinions. Um, you know, she hates poor people and sacrifice. Uh, th- you know, you should make sacrifices and whatnot. She like goes through an exhaustive list of what she considers uh, an immoral sacrifice versus what is considered self interest, and it's like no one has ever gone through that list and tried to address those things those points uh, yeah. and disagree with the actual content of what she said so i don't know it's a good read yeah if you're if you're getting into libertarianism you got to read some some ayn rand yeah. uh and then i have some it, a lot of it's worth it. yeah i have a lot of disagrees with her and i can't stand her, her uh, non-fiction style i can't do it mm-hmm. and i think it's her non-fiction style is more trying to uh, explain the philosophy through narr- like you know like narration so she's not leaving anything yeah. to you know interpretation she wants to understand why every why everything is symbolic like not just leaving yeah you know if you raise an eyebrow in any of the book you can say like oh maybe that means this or maybe that means that she didn't want any ambiguity she wanted you to understand her philosophy in a novel form so she was trying yeah, my, to really my friend her, uh, so but my, I, my I didn't friend, like it i did i didn't like how it worked, how it worked in action yeah. though yeah so and my friend malice it. uh actually michael malice actually talked about that uh one time where he was saying that uh, there's actually, that's pretty different from how the Fountainhead reads. The Fountainhead uh, doesn't have that specific uh, explanation of every metaphor in it. Okay. Um, and sh- when the reviews came out for it, um, most people didn't get it. And uh, I can't remember what the, uh, there was a specific review that came out that just completely missed the entire point of everything. And it just drove her insane. So when she wrote Atlas Shrugged, it was like, everyone will understand exactly what I'm saying. I'm leaving nothing to the imagination. Yeah. But stay away from the films, though. The films are bad. Oh, oh the yeah. The films were bad. Um, and this is coming, like, I actually, I'm not going to say who, but I'm, I'm, I was actually, for a while, when I was living in LA, like, I was actually a, like a good buddy of one of the one of the cast members of that movie. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say who on there, but uh, yeah, it's just, even still, like he was kind of like, nah, yeah, go see it. It's it's interesting, <laughs> like, <laughs> but you know, he wasn't in the yeah. second one. You know, but that wasn't yeah. that wasn't his choice. That was more like uh, uh, the girl that played um, in what is it? Orange is the new black. Orange is the new black. Yeah, yeah. she didn't want any part of it because she, after she she didn't realize there was like a whole like Ayn Rand cult thing going on, and mm-hmm. so like when she did it, she was like, oh, I didn't expect to be in the new Star Trek. <laughs> Right. <laughs> like I didn't yeah, want yeah. to do that, so she was like, "I'm out, I'm out, I don't want to do it." Yeah. And when she backed out, there was another person that backed out, and then if you lose two members of a cast, they just recast. Yeah. So and I mean, they recasted it for the third part too. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And Jason Begay was probably the only saving grace of that one, but even still, mm-hmm. it was just terrible, terrible. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I, just, I only watched the trailers, and then I was like, I can't, I can't watch these. These are terrible. Yeah, uh, but. The, the, uh, uh, t- t- it's really I'm not hard gonna to watch say. Them. It's really there's hard nothing to say. you could say that'll make me watch I'm those not, movies. <laughs> I'm not trying to get you to watch those movies, but honestly, it felt like what, re, from reading the first part of that book and then watching the first part of that movie, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with the movie was better. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna say that just because. Oh wow, <laughs> she didn't lift her eyebrow, and then I didn't have to hear exactly why she lifted her eyebrow for ten hours. <laughs> That was oh god, why. that was why. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> All right, I can respect that. Okay, but <laughs> other than that, like you know, it was it was almost like a watching a made for TV movie. It wasn't absolutely terrible. That's what it was. Yeah, you know, but it was just like you know, you had all this money to do it and. This is what you did, and it seemed like they were just trying to make something to save the copyright status. Because if they if they yeah. waited any longer, yeah. then it was done. I mean, they yeah. they could actually make these things good if they made them into like you know ten part Netflix shows. Yeah, give them like actual money, a good crew, good director, and let them you know play with the material a little bit. Not not you know have to suffer through Leonard Peikoff's notes about the script or whatever, and him <laughs> signing off on everything. That that could actually be good. 
Did he really? That could actually. Did be. he really? The, the oh, I don't know. I'm assuming, say. like, because I'm assuming that he was involved because he owns the IP to all of her stuff, uh, which is just the it is the worst thing that has ever happened he's the worst he's probably the worst human being ever uh leonard peacock and um he has been absolutely destructive to Rand's legacy but unfortunately that's her fault because she was kind of crazy and kicked out everyone who ever disagreed with her uh, yeah. and was just surrounded by these horrible yes men like leonard peacock at the end yeah. that reminds me of someone else that we know i can't anyway any whatever um yeah <laughs> right, so we said we weren't gonna do that for a while but uh, okay okay <laughs> yeah so uh, I guess is, if there, is there any other books that you want to recommend? I think that's pretty much my thing. I mean, that really that the healing our world is a great, great thing to get out of that libertarian, uh, that liberal mindset into something more libertarian. Uh, I think probably the conscience of an anarchist by Gary Chartier. I've read uh, portions of that, and it's also very, very good. Um, and he's one of the left libertarians that you know I would actually sit down and have a beer with. So mm. you no, none of them from C four SS. No, nope, no. I think he's involved there, but oh, I don't know. Okay. There was there's another person from C four SS who hangs out in the anarcho capitalist group. He's a really cool guy, but I think it's Kyle something. Anyways, um mm-hmm. yeah, he's he seems like a pretty cool cat. But everybody else there, it's just like, oh my god. Ken Carson's yeah, getting arrested get for job. G for D Y. I got another person who's just touching a little his, his daughter, like yeah, what his the daughter, heck is going uh, on here? <laughs> I know. Like, it's if, like they've attracted these these personalities. Anyway, I yeah, I'll let you <laughs> Yeah. So I guess that's it. Uh, did you, you want to plug your website or YouTube or no? Uh, yeah, sure I'm the YouTube slash T3HSAUCE, the sauce. Um, I don't really make videos. So if you want to see my old stuff that I didn't delete, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's still You'll probably hear me on this more often than I make videos. So. Yeah. You, you, need to br- you need to bring, I don't know if you can, but resurrect that uh, why I don't take left libertarian seriously. That was beautiful. But I guess, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but. And oh my god, I didn't say... No, I almost did. almost did say worm. Shit! Are you sick of government lackeys who say, you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, in this country, and in a bunch of the Western world, it's okay to just dodge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about FiendPhone. FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to fiendphone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's fiendphone.com. F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com. Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, phone.com. Fiendphone. I never knew remote audio could be this good.